All right, moving on to the fifth lesson of unit four, we are going to be looking at uh, equivalent forms, so different forms um, of quadratic function. So I think we've seen a uh, general form, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We have seen the vertex form, um, y equals ax minus p squared plus q, right? So, so far, these are the two forms we've seen. Uh, now, what we're going to do is, okay, well, let's read the question here. It says, how do we find out where the vertex is we, if we're given the information or given the function in the general form right there? Well, I guess we can find the vertex by, I think we've seen this before, because we can change this to that. No problem. We can complete a square. Complete the square. Okay, so that's really what this lesson is about. So it's nothing new. It's just taking the, the skills that we've learned in the previous unit and then uh, you know, combine together with what we're learning right now in unit four. Okay, so example number one, determine the coordinates of the vertex of this parabola right here. So again, all we need to do is complete a square. So recall, to complete a square, the first step is to factor out the leading coefficient for the first two terms. Okay, so 7, so I factor out 3 for both 3 and negative 12, so I get x squared minus 4x. And then what we're going to do is we are going to take uh, the middle term, the coefficient of the middle term, negative 4, divide that by 2, so that's negative 2, and then square that. So that becomes plus 4 and minus 4. And you still have the plus 7 at the end right there. And now we are going to move this outside because this is a perfect square. Okay, so I'm going to do both at the same time. This is a perfect square. If you factor that, that is going to give us x minus 2 squared. And again, you don't really need to factor it all, every single time. It's this negative 2 is really just half of the negative 4. It's always half of that term right there. Now, if we want to move the negative 4 outside, recall we need to multiply by the leading coefficient in the front. So 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. We still have the plus 7 at the end. So finally, we have 3 times x minus 2 squared. Negative 12 plus 7 is negative 5. And there's our uh, vertex form right there. And therefore, we can find the vertex. Again, vertex, recall, is just p and q, right? Vertex is p comma q. So we look at this vertex form. The value of p is 2. The value of q is negative 5. Again, be careful, this is x minus 2, but that means p is 2, not negative 2, okay? So again, that is the common mistake that students make, so just watch out for that. Okay, so again, nothing new. It's just the uh, completing square procedures, okay? So there are two questions for you to practice, just to, and this one's slightly trickier because it's a fraction coefficient right there, but I think you should be able to do these two, okay? So give it a try. Okay, so for the first practice question, um, again, just follow the same procedure. Uh, factor out the two, the leading coefficient, you get x squared minus 6x. Divide negative 6 by 2, you get negative 3. Square that, so you get plus 9 minus 9 there. This is a perfect squared, so it is just x minus 3 squared again, because this negative 3 came from half of negative 6. Taking out this negative 9 by multiplying by, multiplying by the co coefficient in the front, negative, so it becomes negative 18, plus 19 gives you positive 1. So there's the vertex. All right. Give me one second. I'll give you the answer for part B in a second. Okay, so for part B, same thing. Factor 1 fifth out first. Um, so when you factor 1 fifth out, it means you're dividing, right? So when you factor out one fifth out of two, really what you're doing is you're doing two divided by one out of five. And recall, when you divide fractions, you're multiplying the reciprocal. So two times five over one, which is 10. So that's how I got my 10 X here. And then same thing, divided by two and square, you get 25 and negative 25. Taking the negative 25 out by multiplying by the one fifth in the front, you get negative five minus one, you get negative six. And there is your vertex. Okay, so that's how you can do it. Uh, example two, really it's more of the same thing because now you're looking for axis of symmetry. Well, axis of symmetry happens at the vertex, right? So really, the, I know the question is asking for the equation of the axis of symmetry, but really the question is also asking for the vertex. So you know what? I'm gonna ask you to try it as well, okay? 
Okay, so um, here is the uh, the work, I suppose, for uh, my solution here. Uh, factor of negative two, um, you get seven over two. It's a fraction, so it's it's a little bit trickier, but it's nothing different from what we did before, okay? So seven over two divided by two will give you times one half, right? So that's negative seven over four. Square that, you get 49 out of 16, and then the same thing, minus 49 over 16. Taking this out by uh, multiplying negative two in the front, you get negative 49 out of eight, or sorry, positive 49 out of eight now, because both are negative. You still have the minus one here, um, so because the denominator is 8, so I changed the negative 1 into negative 8 over 8. Um, combine those two together, you get 41 out of 8. So here's the vertex. But again, be careful, be careful. I almost made a mistake. We're looking for the equation of the axis of symmetry, right? So the equation, equation of axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 7 out of 4. Okay, so that is the final answer. Okay, good. Um, Last example I need to show you today, or this lesson, is um, sketch the graph. Obviously, we're in the quadratic function unit. We're going to graph lots, okay? So, uh, lots of quadratic function. That's okay. Not, not too bad, okay? So, so far, um, the way we graphed, um, if it was in a, stand, a general form, is that we just get a table of values, okay? Now, table values, the good thing about that is, you know, it's not too bad. You just plug in numbers, so it's not too difficult. However, when you use graph quadratic functions, especially, okay, especially quadratic functions, you really want to find out what the vertex is because it is a very, very important property of quadratic functions. So you really, again, want to find out where the vertex is. And if you want to do that, well, then you got to complete the square, okay? So that's what we will be doing right now, okay? So I'll do this one here. So again, uh, I'll write down the question first. Uh, completing the square by factoring out the leading coefficient of negative one half. Um, so two divided by negative one half is negative four x plus three. Okay, so again, two divided by negative one half is the same thing as two times negative two over one. That's how I got my negative four. And then you need to uh, make it a square by taking this divided by two, so you get negative two. Square that, you get plus four. And we can't just add a num num number randomly like that. So that's what we need to minus four at the end. Okay, we still have the plus three outside. Recall these three terms is a perfect square. That is x minus two squared. We need to move this negative four outside of the bracket by multiplying the leading coefficient. Negative one half times negative four is actually plus two. We still have the plus three outside. So finally, your vertex form oops, is negative one half times x minus two squared plus five. So now we know the vertex is at two comma five. So two comma five is right here. Two comma five. Okay, now we need to find more points. And we need to find more points. You could look for, actually, I'll, there's a very easy point to find right here. It's the y-intercept of three. And how do I know that? Well, because this is a three. And I know if I plug in zero into x, this is gonna be a zero. If I plug in zero into x, this is gonna be zero. So there is my um, y-intercept. And again, because of the um, symmetrical property of the parabola, I know I will have another point right here. Okay, because it's symmetrical. Okay, now I could find another point, um, or two points, I suppose, because we, general, generally speaking, we want five points. So you could pick any x value you want. You could just put one into the equation because that's kind of right in the middle, right between those these two points. So you know what, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna put one into x and see what I get, okay? Um, you could put it in here or you could put it in here, okay? It doesn't really matter, okay? Um, I am going to put into the original equation. I always, actually, I most likely, not always, but I usually put it into the original equation because well, that's the original equation. So there's no way there's a mistake, right? Right there, I could make a mistake right here, it's possible. 
uh, actually it happens a lot with me, right? You, you know, pro you probably know that by now. Okay, I make a lot of mistakes. Um, one square is one times negative one half is negative one half plus two times one is two plus three. This is actually four point five. So we have a point at one comma four point five. So one comma four point five is right here again because it's symmetrical. It's mirror image, so you should have another point right there. And there is our parabola. Okay, uh, there you go. Missed the point. There you go. Okay, so um, yeah, that's it. That's how you graph it. Um, hopefully not too diff difficult for you, okay? Finally, well, let's answer this question here. It says, what is an advantage of rewriting the quadratic equation in standard form or the vertex form instead of the uh, general form? Well, vertex form is much better because it gives us the most important information of parabola. In my, in my opinion, okay, I think in my opinion, vertex is the most important um, information that we need or that we can get from um, the quadratic function. Okay, Vertex to me is probably the most important. X-intercepts are also very important, as, along with the y-intercept. Okay, so um, that's why I convert into vertex form most uh, most of the time when I see when I need to graph um, quadratic functions. Okay, so uh, maybe I'll write it down because we can get vertex. Okay, all right. So that's it for this lesson. Um, do some practice questions. Let me know if you need help. Okay, good luck.